One group member connected. PacTalk Outdoor from Cardo is an intercom system that allows you to connect and communicate with your friends and family while you're doing an outdoor activity like skiing or mountain biking or climbing or whatever it is you like to do. Hi, my name is Janus Hecht and I'm a professional ski instructor and co-owner of Inspirational Skiing. In this video, I'll go into some of the technical details of PackTalk Outdoor, like battery life and reach and navigating the buttons. And I'll also put some of the bold claims that Cardo makes about PackTalk Outdoor to the test to see how well it performs. This is actually part two of the full review. So if you're interested in seeing my experience using PackTalk Outdoor in different situations, like skiing in a group of friends, skiing with your family, using it as a ski instructing tool, or when you want to capture the special moments on snow on video, make sure that you check out part one of the review. You can find the link in the description and it will pop up in the corner right there. Before we jump into the video, I want to be fully transparent and let you know that I am an ambassador for Cardo and that they did sponsor this video. But we agreed that it would only make sense to make the review if it could be my completely honest opinion about what I think is great about PackTalk Outdoor and what I think is not so great about PackTalk Outdoor. So this is what it's going to be. If you do decide to make PackTalk Outdoor part of your skiing experience, we have a discount code that you can use to get a favorable discount. You by no means have to use it, but if you do, you get a favorable discount and we will earn a small commission. So it will also be a cool way for you to support inspirational skiing and help us create much more free content for you to enjoy. Thank you so much for your support and with that out of the way, let's jump right into the review. When you receive your package from Cardo, this is what it looks like. They have some different cool information on it. And inside that, you'll find another box with all the items you need to get started. So here are the items that you'll find inside the box. You'll have the unit, you'll have two different installation op options one with a clamp and a glue plate option. And here's an alcohol prep pad for the glue plate. You'll have the headset with the speakers and the wireless microphone, a charging cable, an adapter cable, so you can use a different set, a different headset. And you have some stickers for the inside of the helmet. These are for the speakers and these are to guide the wire inside the helmet. You also get a sticker, some safety information, an installation guide, and a pocket guide of how to use PackTalk Outdoor, which can be really helpful to begin with. The units communicate without the need of a cellular network or Wi-Fi connection. They use what is called a dynamic mesh system. So that's a system that allows for two units to communicate up to one kilometer or 0.6 miles and under ideal conditions. But the mesh system means that if you add more units to the group, they will create a network that makes the connection between them even stronger. And theoretically, the range can get up to three miles or five kilometers if the units are placed ideally. So the important thing here is that there need to be line of sight. So as soon as something comes in between the units, let's say, a mountain or a hill or a giant rock, they will lose connection. But as soon as you regain line of sight, they will reestablish the connection automatically. So if you have more units in your group, that will help you overcome obstacles in the terrain. So what it looks like is 
that these two have line of sight and these two have line of sight and the whole network will be connected which means that the whole network will be able to communicate with each other even though you have obstacles in the terrain so when you're taking the lift up you also have I mean, in my experience, you also have great connections in most situations, as long as you don't get too far apart. Uh, but you can experience some brief interruptions or disturbances in the connection when you pass a lift tower. So once you get indoors, it gets a little bit weird with the connection. Sometimes it works, even though you have a wall between the units, and sometimes it doesn't. So you can't really know. Uh, and that means that you need to be aware of um, turning the unit off or at least the audio and microphone when you go to the bathroom. During my time using PacTalk, I've experienced a couple of connection issues. But don't worry, most of them can be solved quickly and easily. And I've made a list that can help you solve any connection issue you may experience quickly and easily as well. Here it is. With PacTalk Outdoor, Kado is collaborating with JBL, who is known for making high quality speakers. And with the speaker system in PacTalk Outdoor, I think they have made some really, really good speakers that definitely uh, does the job of delivering uh, a great music listening experience and yeah I couldn't wish for more in that sense so I'm really happy about that. When it comes to talking to each other via the intercom system which in my opinion is the most important one uh, the sound quality can be compared to a phone call the sound of a phone call going through uh, uh, high quality speakers but it's even a little bit better than that. So you cannot compare it to say a walkie-talkie where you have all the noise going on. This is in a completely different league and it's really a pleasant listening experience when you're talking to each other. Hey James, it's getting really cloudy. Okay, uh, I know the way down to just ski in behind me. All right. So you can see me the whole time. Yeah. Overall, I think the sound quality of the speakers is excellent both when listening to music and when using the intercom system. When you talk to each other in a group, I've experienced a small delay in the conversation. Not much, but enough that it's kind of annoying when you're standing close to each other and you can hear the voice directly. So you'll hear it twice. Uh, with the small delay. Last winter we made a test so you can get a feeling of how this delay is experienced. So in so this, this test, test we're recording, recording my voice, voice through, through the, the mobile, mobile phone, phone camera, camera that, that I'm, I'm using, using and, and through, through a pack talk, talk which, which, is, which is in the, in back, the back behind, behind me. me. So, so you, you should, should be, be able, able to tell, tell the, the difference, difference hear, hear the, the delay, delay that, is that is coming through, through the pack talk system. So luckily Kado is aware of this delay problem. And they just released an update, a software update, which has minimized this delay. And we just tested it here in our house. And the delay is noticeable smaller, but it's still there. You can kind of hear the delay, but it's better. And hopefully, Kato will keep improving in this area. Even though this delay can be a bit annoying when you're standing close to other members of the group, this can be solved by having the habit of muting your microphone once you get close to the other group members. And I've done that and as long as you remember to unmute when you're skiing a little bit away from each other again, this delay is not that big of a problem. So PacTalk Outdoor is made out of different types of plastic that you can see here. And it makes it pretty lightweight, which is a good thing when you wear it on your helmet and you don't want to feel it, you don't want it to disturb your movements. 
and you certainly don't, I think. Uh, and it feels, still feels durable and pretty strong. So when I try to twist it here, there is no real give in it. And it feels like it can take a pretty hard impact without breaking. But of course, we want to put it to the test to see if Pack Talk Outdoor can take an impact without breaking. So, testing. Can you hear me, Stine? I can hear you loud and clear, Janus. All right, so let's do it. And the green lights are still flashing. So let's see when I connect it again. If we, if it's still alive, let's see. So testing, can you still hear me, Stine? I can still hear you, Jena. Okay, perfect. So it's still working and let's see if it has any scratches. Yeah, it's got a small one there. Now that's pretty much it. Otherwise it looks fine. It's still working. So, nice. Cattle claims that the units can work from minus 30 to plus 55 degrees Celsius, which is minus 22 to plus 131 Fahrenheit. And I did test the units for several days at around minus 20 degrees Celsius in Norway. And I had no problems at all with the units and they um, helped their battery life for the whole day. So I can confirm so far. And I think if it's more than minus 30 degrees Celsius, I don't recommend that you ski outside for that long anyways. It's not only temperature that the units can withstand. Kato claims that no matter what you throw at it, your waterproof Packtalk Outdoor will take the beating and keep you connected. Rain, snow, sun, mud and dust. They even have an IP67 rating to back this up, but I'm not entirely convinced. So we have to put it to the test, of course, to see whether this holds true or not. Okay, so now we are throwing snow and rain and dust at the pack talk outdoor that I'm having that's sitting right here. So now it's time to test if it's still working. I'll, I'll move away, away from, the from the microphone and it should be picking up the intercom sound from the pack talk unit that I'm wearing on my helmet. Yep, it does. Yep. Yeah, does it work? It does, yeah. Can okay. you hear me? Oh, perfect. <laughs> Great. One of the questions I'm asked a lot about Packtalk Outdoor is what about when the, uh, the wind is howling? Can it filter out the noise? And the answer is yes, there is a very impressive noise cancellation system built into Packtalk Outdoor. We haven't had a storm while testing Packtalk Outdoor with the video camera on, but we did have that when we tested Packtalk Ski, which is built on the same technology of noise cancellation as the one used in Packtalk Outdoor. And here is the result that you can hear for yourself. So, Stine, can you uh, hear me? I can hear you loud and clear, Janus. Okay, that's perfect, thanks. 
I can hear you perfectly as well. When you're skiing, especially on hotter snow, there is some scraping noises coming from the skis and snow, uh, which may be picked up by the microphone. And the noise cancellation takes a little bit to kick in, so it may not filter out that noise. And that might be a little bit annoying for the people listening to other people's ski scraping on the snow. So the way you solve this is that you go inside your Kalo Connect app and you reduce the microphone sensitivity just a little bit so it won't pick up as much noise coming from the snow. The phone feature is a really nice feature to have because you're already connected to a phone. So all incoming sounds like from a call, from a message, from an email will sound in your speakers so you won't miss anything. And if you want to answer a call, you just push a random button or you use the voice command and say answer if you want to pick up your phone or you say ignore if you don't want to pick up your phone. Once you've picked up your phone, you'll connect with your phone call and you'll disconnect from the group so only you and the person on the other end of the call can hear your phone conversation. Once you have ended your call, you'll automatically jump back into your intercom group and they will be able to hear you and you'll be able to hear them once again. The music feature is easily operated via voice commands. You just say, hey, Carter, music on, and it will start the last song you played. You can then say, hey, Carter, next track, or hey, Carter, previous track, and you can go back and forth. You can use Siri to find your favorite song and have that start playing right away. So it makes everything quite easy. You can also listen to music while using the intercom system. And the way you make sure that you can still hear people talking while listening to music is that you go into the volume settings and you can set the, the volume for music and volume for the intercom system in the ratio so that you can hear both things at the same time at the ratio you prefer. Voice recording is another feature that Kato has added to the PacTalk outdoor experience. It's something that's been used in the motorcycle industry for many years to capture the collected uh, experience of riding together. So this, I guess, felt like a natural move uh, for PacTalk outdoor as well. Uh, I don't think I'm going to use that feature that much. For me, it's much more about being present in the moment and if I want to capture my skiing experience, I want to capture it on video so I can see my movements. But maybe the voice recording feature is something for you. And if you try it, please let us know in the comments down below what you think of voice recording feature on Pactog Outdoor. Pactog Outdoor currently comes in a black version and a white version. So, these, I think, are great colors because they will fit almost any color scheme that you prefer. So the plastic and the lightweight may give it a little bit of a less high quality feeling, but the lightweight is also an advantage so you don't feel it on your helmet. But I would love to see in future models a design and a feel that was more in line with the high quality functionality that it definitely has. As you can see here, there is a button on each side and there is a button in the middle, which is both a push button and a rolling button. And this gives PacTalk Outdoor a nice symmetrical design. And you'll quite quickly get familiar with the different basic functions that you can access via these buttons. And you can help yourself with reading the pocket guide, which comes in the box before you go out on the slopes and then you'll be fine. The buttons are made in a way where you can use them even though you have skiing gloves on. But I've seen some people having a little bit of difficulty finding the right button and if they have some mittens on with no fingers, it can be a little bit challenging. So that's why you also have the option of the voice command. And to help you out a little bit, 
here is a list of all the commands you can give to Kato's Packtalk Outdoor. Kato also made a student edition of the Packtalk Outdoor. And it's a more simple version designed to be easily attached and detached to students' helmets. So there are a number of differences to the regular um, Packtalk Outdoor. Instead of the two JBL speakers, it has a more simple and single speaker. And instead of the Y microphone, it has a boom mic. It also doesn't have a phone connection. So in this sense, it's a much more simple version of the Packtalk Outdoor, which makes it very good for ski schools who doesn't want all the extra features. If you're interested in all the differences between these two models, here's the list for you and you can pause the screen to check them out. If you represent a ski school or a ski club and you think that your ski school or ski club might be interested in trying and using Packtalk Outdoor, please feel free to contact me and I'll be happy to help you with the next steps. If you're a family with smaller kids, you may want to consider having the student edition for your kids since this will work just as well with communicating and connecting while you're skiing, but it's a little bit cheaper and it's a much more simple setup. So the first thing you want to do when you receive your new Packtalk Outdoor is to update it to the latest software. That way you'll get the latest features and the latest bug fixes. So you can do that easily via your phone when you're connected to the Kato Connect app or you can do it directly over your computer. And to make it easy for you, I've made a link in the description directly to the update page. If you have the regular unit, not the student edition, you can connect it to the Kato Connect app and inside the app you can have access to the different features, the music, intercom, phone and some quick access here where you can also activate Siri if you have an iPhone and you can go into the voice recording. When you turn on the unit which is connected to your phone via the Kato Connect app, they will automatically find each other. But if you experience some issues with them finding each other, I suggest that you close the app on your phone, then turn the unit on and then open the app on your phone again. It will search for your unit and they will find each other. When it comes to installation, you have two options. You have the clamp and you have the glue plate. So the glue plate is the more permanent solution and what you do is that you use the alcohol prep pad to clean a good spot on your helmet and then draw this plastic off and you mount it on your helmet so it's pretty easy. And it's, once it's there you can easily attach and detach your unit uh, in the cradle. The glue is designed to be extremely strong, but on one occasion I did manage to rip it off when I took a hard impact to my helmet. Talking to the people at Kato afterwards, they told me that this was highly unusual and unexpected. And to be fair, I've had several hundred hours skiing with the glue plate on without it becoming loose and it still sits there pretty tightly. So this is not something I would be concerned about and I still think that the glue plate solution is a really good solution if you want a more permanent setup. If you decide at one point that you don't want the glue solution anymore, there is an option to dissolve the glue and take off the glue plate again. The clamp solution is a very flexible solution where you install the unit on the strap, right on the earpiece, like this. This solution works well if you have several users using the same Packtalk unit. You can easily switch between users and it works, in my experience, on, I would say, about 90% of all helmets. 
and I've tested it with more than 100 helmets. In the case where it doesn't fit well, if it's your own helmet, the obvious solution would be to use the glue plate. Or what I've done in these cases was to just install it on the goggle strap, which worked okay if it was only for one day. As with the glue plate solution, you can also, with the clamp solution, easily detach and reattach the unit in the cradle. Once you have your unit installed on your helmet, you need to attach the microphone and the speakers. And you do that by placing the wire on inside the port here. And there you go. You have this slider here, which locks the wire onto the unit. So it sits very tightly there. And if you need to detach it, you just pull the slider back and there you go. And you need the same port for charging your unit. If you don't want to use the wire microphone and the speakers that comes along with the PackTalk Outdoor, you can use the adapter cable that also is in the box. And if your own headset has a jack cable like this, you can use that instead. And like, there you go. As long as it has a microphone, you'll be able to use it in the same way. As you can see here on my helmet, the wire goes behind and underneath here and inside the helmet, it's behind the padding. And I've used there are some stickers that comes along that, can, that you can use to guide the wire so it sits in the right place. And the speakers themselves, they, that's a Velcro system that you can use to place it inside your helmet. And on some helmets, this doesn't work. And then you have some stickers with perfect Velcro that you can place inside your helmet on your earpiece. And then the speaker will uh, fit on that. Some helmets have a small pocket inside the earpiece. And that's a very good solution because then you can just place the speaker inside the pocket and you won't feel the speaker at all. The wire microphone is easily attached with Velcro to the strap and you want to have like the shiny plate side turning outside. And once it's there, it will work well as long as nothing is in the way. There are two ways that you can connect two or more pack talks in a group. So the first one is directly between them and you have them search for each other by pushing the two. Grouping initiated. Grouping succeeded. The two outside buttons at the same time in two or more units at the same time and they will find each other. So this one already found that one and that one just needs to make sure that it has... Grouping succeeded. Yeah. One group member connected. There you go. So they are in the same group. So Steeny, you can try to say something into that mic and we'll see if we can hear it in this speaker. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Can you hear me? Can you, can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay, perfect, thank you. This method of creating a group often works well, but I've experienced some times where I've had maybe 10 people in a group and some member didn't connect with the group for some reason. And what I'll suggest you do is just to try to create the group again, or you can use the second method, which is the one that I use now, and that is to go inside the app on the intercom system and start creating the group from there. Because then if you want to add another group member, you can easily do that by adding a group member in there and only have that unit searching for the group and they will be connected to the whole group. So that's a lot better to make sure that everybody's in the group. So you just go inside your Cutter Connect app on your phone. You push the intercom system. And here you can see I have a group activated 
that I created in Hemsedal, Norway in December. I have 12 group members. I could add a different member here. And if there's a unit nearby where someone is pushing the two outside buttons, five seconds, this will be found by the group and added to the group. I could also just go out here. I have two groups. I have another one from Sultan, Austria in November. I could create a new group here, name it, and add up to 15 group members. But most people, if they're family, they'll have one group. And the good thing that is that when you turn your units off and you turn them on again, the group that you have activated will find each other again automatically. So once you have set up a group, it'll stay there, it'll find each other again. So it makes it really easy to use. Kato claims that you can fully charge your unit in three hours. So having them charged during the night will be plenty of time to get them fully charged. With the box comes a charging cable that goes into the same port as the wire, a microphone and speakers. Uh, but what is not in the box is the charger itself. So you have to buy that somewhere else. And this one, I think we bought at a supermarket, so it's really easy to get hold of. So what I do, since I'm often responsible for charging multiple units, is that I've bought like a multi-charger with multiple ports here. So this can be a very easy and convenient solution for you as well, if you have more units that you are responsible for charging. Cado states that the battery life is 10 days of standby time and 10 hours of talk time. And I've used it in a variety of weather situations, cold temperatures and so on. And those claims seem to hold true. At least I've been able to talk for the whole day of skiing with no problems at all. If you want to know during the day how much battery you have left, you can always use the voice command, hey Kado, battery status, and it will tell you how much you have left. Also, when you turn the unit off, it will tell you, so which is pretty nice because then you know whether you have to charge it or not. So is Kado's Pack Talk outdoor for you? Well, it depends on whether you want to be able to connect and communicate with the people you're doing your outdoor activity with. When it comes to the technical details, there might be some minor issues here and there, but it's nothing that's a deal breaker at all. I'm genuinely and generally impressed by, by how well it works in different situations. If I missed anything in this video or you have further questions, please feel free to ask your question in the comments down below and I'll be happy to do my best to answer your question. That's all for this review. Have a nice day and see you on the slopes.